So if you're switching vehicles and you're purchasing new insurance, let's assume that you have the same vehicle, got a new vehicle, doesn't really matter, and you're switching companies, there's three things that you need to make sure that you do when you've switched to a new insurance company. The first one is to make sure that you cancel the old policy and you turn off your auto pay. So when a customer needs to cancel their policy, they should call their insurance company and tell them, one, turn off my auto pay first. That way it doesn't automatically draft. You may wanna ask the company that you're with if it's already processing, because if it is, then it's too late. It's gonna go through your bank, and I'll tell you in a minute how to fix that. The other part is if you forget to do that, it's just gonna keep drafting, and before you know it, it's past the point of where they can refund all of that money. Even though you might've switched back three, four, five, six, eight months ago, you may not even be able to go back past three weeks. And you can fight some of that stuff, but it's a hassle on your end. It's just not worth it. Turn off my auto pay and then cancel my policy effective the date that your new policy starts. Every policy starts and stops at midnight at 12.01 a.m. So if I'm starting it on whatever fifth of the month, then I cancel my other car insurance that same month on that fifth. There's no lapse, you're not gonna have an issue, and you don't wanna have a gap there. The second part is you need to take those new ID cards and put them in your car. If it's digital, then you've got it on your phone, you don't have to worry about it. If you get pulled over, you wanna make sure that you can show proof of insurance and not have to go back to court to prove that you have insurance. You may not necessarily get a ticket for that, but it's better to have that data right away and available, that way you don't have to fight it, spend hours of your day, taking time off of work just to show proof that you've had insurance so you don't pay a hundred dollar ticket it's not worth it and the third and most important piece is when you get a new policy with a new agent you need to review those coverages I would recommend taking both your policies and comparing the two hopefully you did that before you shopped make sure that the coverages are similar or that they're ones that you're very confident in not necessarily what the agent told you. The reason I say you need to compare them is also sometimes the agents mess up. They have something called errors and omissions. So if they do screw up, they typically cover it, but there has to be some sort of proof where if they didn't record phone calls, which a lot of agents don't have offices that do, then you can't show that that was a coverage that you got. And when you e-signed or signed your documents, you're authorizing those coverages that you've selected. So if you've already done that, make sure you grab your paperwork today, look it over, make sure the property damage isn't half of what it should be, make sure that if you're doing a house that your water backup hasn't disappeared, make sure that you've got full replacement cost on all your contents, and just make sure you're covered properly. This isn't always the agent trying to trick you. A lot of times these systems default to certain things. For example, the company that I work with, we typically quote 250 per person, 500,000 per accident, and 100,000 for property damage. When we lower those coverages, because a lot of outside of our states do, they carry lower limits. And so when we lower them down to 50,000 per person and 100,000 per accident, it defaults and only gives you 50,000 for property damage. If the agent didn't see it or catch it, they might have told you it was 100,000, but unless you can prove that, you're only covered for 50,000. You may not think that's a lot. If you hit a nice car, a good Volvo, a good BMW, a nice Mercedes, and it's a $60,000 car, you're on the hook for 10 grand that turns into a really bad experience and it's not worth your time when you could just look it over quickly and make sure it's correct. If you're not sure if your agent is doing the right thing for you, I will put a link to the company that I work with below. There's also a link to a app that you can use where you can check multiple different companies. I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button. That helps me a lot. If it was super invaluable, there's a super thanks down there as well where you can donate. I'm Mark with Think Insurance. I'll see you in the next one.